There is no electricity in my house. There is no gas in my house. I am okay. My life is not in danger, but the thing is I am here at my house by myself. I'm just kind of like, dang, I'm trying to stay bundled up as much as possible. It is freezing cold in my house. I'm gonna guess that it is below 60 degrees inside of my house right now, which, you know, for normal outside weather, 50 something degrees is not unbearable, but like I am not used to the inside of my house being anything below 70. I'm a very cold natured person. I don't know if y'all can tell, but my complexion right now, I'm freezing. I have gloves on and everything. But yeah, I don't know the exact temperature because the thermostat is turned off because the electricity is turned off. And now I'm sitting here like, dang, I can't even, I can't make coffee. I couldn't even make coffee the old fashioned way. Like just heating it up on the stove because I don't have gas. I don't have nothing. I have no heating source other than taking a match and lighting a candle. And I'm really sitting here right now trying to think, is there a way that I can make coffee and make breakfast using only a candle because I'm hungry and I'm cold. <laughs> and also with the fridge, with the electricity being out, which my electricity has been out for the past few hours. They said that they were just cycling it through. They're trying to like reserve the electricity for everybody. So they're like giving everybody a little bit of electricity at a time or something. I don't know how it works, but they ain't been giving me no electricity. Mine's just been completely off. So anyway, I'm like, okay, what can I eat? I got hot Cheetos, I got some stuff. I'm not, let me not be dramatic. I definitely have food in the pantry that does not need to be cooked. I have like these snacks here. Luckily I keep these snacks for Zaya. So sorry, Zaya, I will be eating your snacks. Um, but as far as like making oatmeal, making matzo meal, making pancakes, all this other stuff, rice, pasta, that's useless to me because I can't cook it because I have no way of cooking it. And then everything in my fridge is about to go bad. But I was like, you know what? I could take the stuff out of my fridge and put it in a cooler or put it in a, put it in a box or something and put it outside because it's freezing outside. So might as well put the stuff outside and, and, and keep it cold. They are expecting this weather to last for at least a few more days is what I'm seeing. So I'm just trying to ration everything out and think it through. <sighs> All right, my mom just called me um, saying to pack up stuff Zaya needs more warm clothes because she didn't go over there with much basically we're just trying to get to be where we're all in one place because they don't like that I am here by myself and they don't live far from me but far enough to where we've been separated but she said she might have found someone who has the right kind of like four wheel drive. I keep trying to turn on all the lights. Four wheel drive vehicle who could possibly pick me up and bring me over to them. Still don't know if that is the best idea, but she told me to get packed up just in case some random person might be coming to pick me up and save me from being here by myself. Okay, it's 1022. Electricity just turned back on. It feels like it's been much more time than that. I started vlogging at like nine o'clock this morning. I guess because I was up earlier than that, but electricity, so I hurried up. I was like, make the coffee, make the food, use it while you got it, because I don't know when it's about to turn off again. Um, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's 56 degrees. I knew it was below 60. Has your house ever been in the 50s? If it has, I'm so sorry. Well, I tried to make malto meal in the microwave since I can't use my stove. It's actually easier to make it on the stove because it always, always boils over in the microwave. Uh, okay, take two. We had to put it in a double broiler <laughs> and watch it closely, but I got it together. Okay, update. I'm still home alone. I did end up finding someone who was able to give me a ride to my mom's house, but I ended up declining it because at my mom's house, they don't have running water. Over here, I don't have gas, but I do have running water and I do have electricity. It was just kind of a toss up and I didn't really feel like it was necessarily worth it or necessary for me to try to go to my mom's house when the roads definitely still are dangerous. If it's not an absolute emergency for me to like go to my mom's house, I don't feel like I necessarily need to. I do still have electricity. The sun is going down. It's getting a bit colder. Current outside temperature is 18 degrees and it's gonna get down to seven degrees tonight. They are telling us to try to conserve energy as much as possible. So I have not been 
on my computer or watching TV or anything like that. Zaya is still with my parents. They're over there. They're doing fine. Like for us, we're very grateful. Like we have shelter. We have the basic things that we need. Even if we don't have gas or electricity or whatever, like we have shelter and we have blankets and things like that to where it's not like a life or death dire emergency for us compared to people who unfortunately, you know, homeless people or things like that who are out on the streets who have it much worse. So I hope that this whole part of this video is not coming off as ungrateful or over dramatic or anything. I'm just kind of sharing what's going on in my life. Several inches of snow on the ground, bitterly cold temperatures as this winter weather continues to impact Central Texas. All right, y'all, so it is Tuesday day. I guess the, the, the weather started getting bad really on Thursday. So we had Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, dang. It's already the sixth day of this weather. I am still rocking the same ensemble of winter gear. To be honest with you, I can't even take a proper shower because can't really get hot water right now. The water is ice cold. Anywho, right now, it is seven degrees right now. It's 8.25 a.m., it's seven degrees, but it's sunny outside. And I just went outside just like this. I didn't even have my proper jacket on or anything. I have a thermal shirt, I have this sweater, have gloves, hat, everything, and then I had this blanket like this, and I just went outside like this. Um, I don't think I've ever been outside in seven degree weather, not even, I feel like it wasn't even seven degrees in Colorado, maybe it was, I don't know. But it doesn't really feel like seven degrees. Even with this on, it was comfortable. It wasn't freezing cold, I wasn't, you know what I mean? Like it was, it was doable, it was definitely doable. So I'm like, you know what? The wind is not blowing. I think that's the thing too. The wind is not blowing. It's not windy at all right now. And it's sunny and the weather is bearable. So I feel like if I completely bundle up, put on all my winter gear and everything and have a blanket like this, cause I feel like this helped too. Maybe I can walk to my mom's house because I just walked out there to see what's going on because I haven't really been out of my house at all this whole time. I've just been able to look from my window and I can't really see too much from my house. So I walked out kind of to the main road of the neighborhood just to see like what it's looking like and what the roads are looking like. Roads are definitely still icy and still very snowy right now. You can definitely see the tire tracks where people have attempted to drive around, but you can also see tire tracks that swerve off the road. So I'm like, that's not a good sign. Then as I continued to walk further away from my house, I started seeing cars that were just like left in the street in awkward positions, clearly showing that people tried to drive and they couldn't and they either got stuck or they got scared or couldn't go any further and had to just leave their car. So that's making me feel like it is not safe to drive. Um, like I said, there was a guy who had a truck who was gonna give me a ride, but I just don't know if I even trust that, especially since after last night, I think it kind of got like a little bit worse. I don't know. Just me walking out there and looking at the road, like how slick the roads still are right now and looking at all these cars, I don't know if I feel safe. And then as I was walking out there, I saw someone in a little car trying to drive and they were like struggling, turning, trying to, well, maybe if I just, well, uh, and they ended up just kind of like slowly going down and going off to the side and then I couldn't see them anymore, but they looked like they were really struggling. So the thing about me going from here to my mom's house, it's not a far drive. My mom lives really close to me, but it is a steep downhill hilly situation. So I just feel like, you know, driving on a flat surface for a little bit, you could probably make it, but having to go down this hill and then it's like, you gotta go down a hill and then make a turn. I just don't feel like that's gonna be a good idea in a car on very slippery roads. So I don't have electricity right now. I still don't have gas, haven't had gas this whole time, which means I haven't had my heater this whole time. All I have is running water, which is good, but it's not helping me stay warm and it's not helping me be able to like, heat up any food or anything, because without gas or electricity, you can't make any type of hot food or drink or anything. And I'm also running out of things to eat that don't require any cooking, because at this point, I have like dry oatmeal, dry popcorn, dry rice, but I'm running out of like any sort of real food that I can eat because I can't cook anything and I have like frozen chicken breast, but what am I gonna do with that if I can't cook it? So it's just like, bruh. And then even when the electricity did come on, certain things, like, I don't know. So it's starting to become a little bit more of a struggle, me being over here by myself. Uh, my parents at least have gas. They have had gas this whole time, which means 
at least at some points, they've been able to heat their house. They have a real fireplace that they've been able to use and they've been able to cook food and stuff. The only problem is that now they don't have running water but they've been able to borrow water from the neighbors. And I have some bottled water that I can maybe bring, but I can't bring too much because I don't know if I even said this yet, but I'm considering walking to my mom's house. That's what this whole scene is about. I'm considering walking to my mom's house, although it I just looked it up on the maps because I've never even attempted to do this before. A five minute drive turns into a 45 minute walk. So it's approximately 45 minutes. I don't know with the weather and everything, maybe an hour, let's just say an hour. It's an hour walk to my mom's house, which back in the day when I was in high school, me and my friends used to walk the town. We used to walk everywhere because we didn't have cars or anything. Oh, there's my mom calling me. Hello? Hey. Um, I have an idea. Okay. <laughs> Uh, what if I walk to your house? No, I'll get somebody to come pick you up. But I just walked out there and the roads are, I witnessed somebody almost just die. All right, so I just got off the phone with my mom. I told her my idea. At first she was like, no, if anything, we'll, we'll try to get you a ride again. And I'm like, I don't, I don't feel comfortable being in a car. At least if I'm on my own two feet, slipping and falling on your own two feet is different than slipping in a whole car and crashing into something. So I feel much more comfortable walking rather than being in any car right now. And y'all who've been following me, y'all know how I am with cars in general. So yeah, I trust my own feet more than I trust a car right now. The only thing is I have to leave Bougie here, but I have his automatic feeder, which I thought I didn't have the right thing, like the right food that would work for it, but I do. So I'll be able to leave him with his automatic feeder and just close him up in the laundry room, make sure he has everything he needs and he'll just have to stay here. Uh, Cause obviously I can't bring him with me because even if I like put him in his cage and bring him the cold, he's gonna freeze on the way there. So update, I was just saying how at least I have running water. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. No, I don't. I've had one running water this whole time, but now I don't. Um, I don't know, I think it's a mixture of the pipes freezing, but also the neighborhood water pressure. They're saying something's wrong with it. So I have like very low water pressure. Let me not waste it. My kitchen sink is the only one that's kind of working, but I just checked all the bathrooms and it's either a very slight drip coming out or nothing at all coming out. And it's ice cold water anyway, so I am still not able to take a shower. I can uh, do a little hoe bath like I've been doing, which if you don't know what that is, you just take a washcloth and dampen it and wipe yourself down a little bit. So we really out here roughing it right now, but I got both of my parents on board with the idea of me just walking into their house. Um, little behind the scenes fact, my parents are very overprotective. <laughs> I'm sorry, mom, because I know you're gonna watch this, but you are. My parents are very overprotective. Both of them are. So they're very like cautious and just like, don't want me to do anything. Don't want me to like venture out and do anything. But I'm like, I think I can do it. And I don't have to walk on any type of like super busy road and ain't no roads are busy right now anyway, but it's not like I'm walking up across the highway or anything. It's just like, neighborhood roads the only problem is it's very hilly so i will still have to be careful not to slip and slide down the hill but again i would rather slip and slide on my butt than in a car people are trying to do what they can during the day today because tonight is going to get bad again and we're going to all be trapped again after tonight so it's kind of like okay if you're going to do if you're going to make a move make a move now because after tonight we're going to be trapped for another two days so I just found this in my pantry. It's from when I had a party at one point. And th these are the little fire flame things that you use underneath the food thing to keep the food warm. So it's like a gel that you light. I feel like I could do a little DIY campfire stove because I wanna make like hot chocolate or coffee or something warm, not only to warm me up, but because I don't barely have anything else that I can eat that doesn't require warming or cooking of some sort. So I'm thinking, don't try this at home. Don't try this at home, y'all. Here's what I'm thinking. I don't know if this is gonna work. No, oh, it's too tall. Wait. Okay, I think I might've just figured something out. I have this Betty Crocker three-tier oven rack. It's like something that gives you more space in your oven to stack up more stuff. And it's, I think might be the perfect little contraption. If I just like use this as my little stove setup, this will be my flame source. And then I can like 
get a little pot or whatever. And then I light it here and it heats up here. And then I can put like my stuff in to cook. Watch, as soon as I start doing this, the power is gonna come back on and then I would have been able to just probably heat up whatever I wanted to in the microwave. But at this point, honestly, I'm also just really bored and I just wanna see if this is gonna work. Okay, I was able to kind of wash out this smaller pot that I needed with the little two drops of water that I had. I repeat, do not try this at home. I mean, this is a thing that you use to keep food warm. So I'm not completely using it wrong. And this is a thing that you use to cook food in the oven. And this is a pot. I feel like, hey, it all makes sense. It's like not even showing up on camera, but there's like a whole flame. I'm gonna put it under the pot. There you go, you can kind of see it. It's, it's a decent little flame going, a little campfire. I can either make coffee or hot chocolate. I think I'm gonna make a, a mocha choca coffee latte. <laughs> so a mix between coffee and hot chocolate. Measure out a cup of milk, pour that in here. So let's see how long that takes to warm up. I probably need to stir it. I'm a genius. Bruh, I, t I kid you not, I kid you not. Just as I walked back over here, because I was like, okay, the milk is probably hot enough. I went over here to grab the stuff to mix it into the milk. Just as I grabbed this, my electricity just came back on. Did I not say that? Watch, as soon as I start doing this, the power is gonna come back on and I could just heat this milk up in the microwave. Did, did I not say that? And as soon as I, as, wow, but whatever. This was a fun little experiment. It, it worked, it's working. But yeah, electricity is back on. Um, they keep, I guess, giving us electricity for like 45 minutes at a time and then turning it off and then it'll be off for like three hours and it'll be on for a couple minutes and it'll be off. So you gotta use it while you got it and make the most of it because I have no idea. It's really hard to know and say when we're gonna have it or not have it. But yes, now I'm able to use my oven, my microwave, and like my little appliances like toaster and air fryer. At times like this, I'm glad I have an air fryer because there's certain things I can make on the air fryer that actually really come in handy because um, I still can't use my stove. But I've got my little bootleg stove now. Hot chocolate mix into the warm milk. And I'm gonna put some espresso powder in there too. Just a dash. See, see the steam? This actually ended up working out pretty well. When in doubt, just figure it out. This is really ironic that I have this whole big, well, I was gonna say beautiful kitchen. It's not looking too beautiful right now. It looks a freaking mess. But I have this whole big nice kitchen and yet I'm in here cooking on this. Like I said, don't, don't ever take anything for granted. Put this flame out, they just said put the cover back on. Ah, the struggle. Flame is out, hot chocolate coffee situation is steaming hot. Look at me, I am a survivalist. Taste test, I mixed together hot chocolate mix, instant espresso, and dark chocolate chips. Mmm. And see, I don't think it would have been as good if I would have just made it in the microwave. Cause with my little contraption, I was able to slowly stir and, the, and dissolve the things into it as it cooked and melt the chocolate chips into it. Bougie. I have to leave the sinks dripping and Bougie is over here having the time of his life. Normally I would not let him be up on the kitchen counter like this, but you know, what What am I trying to protect here? Look Look how, let's just look. <laughs> you're trying to hit the water and you're getting all wet. It is too cold to be getting wet like that. It's gonna take you forever to dry. Don't do that. Okay, but while I have electricity, let me stop playing around and actually make, okay, Bougie, the disrespect. Let me stop playing around and actually make some breakfast. I have eggs, bacon, and toast. I keep saying I don't have my stove, but I can make my bacon in the air fryer. I can make my toast in my toaster and I can make eggs in the microwave or with my little DIY stove, possibly. The microwave would probably be a safer bet. I mean, eggs, scrambled eggs made in the microwave. If you do it right, they can actually be good. So I think I'll just do that. I'm gonna go ahead and cook up all this rest of this bacon while I can, just so at least it'll be 
cooked, even if I don't eat it all right now, I'll have it to snack on later because I am running out of snacks. Thank goodness for my air fryer. See, people always say, why, why do you need an air fryer? You could just make that on the stove. But what happens when you don't have a stove? What happens when your stove is not working? Then you, you then you're gonna wish you had an air fryer. If you're not on the air fryer train, just anyway, you're missing out. Cause it really comes in handy just on a regular day. There's a lot of things you can make in it. Okay, bacon is almost done in the air fryer. For the eggs, I'm putting butter, two eggs, pepper. I'm gonna put some chili onion crunch in there and scramble this up. Ugh, I did not mean to stick that fork in there. I was gonna use this. <sighs> and I really meant to get a spoon, not a fork. Trader Joe's chili onion crunch goes good in everything. Scramble with the butter and everything mixed in. It's kind of hard because this is, everything is so cold, it's like frozen. Scramble it up. The butter doesn't really have to be well incorporated because it's gonna melt and it'll start mixing up better. Ew, does not look very appetizing right now, but you put it in the microwave on 30 second intervals. You just do 30 seconds at a time. You don't want to overcook it and you mix as you go. Bacon is done. So after 30 seconds, it's just like the butter has started to melt. It's just barely starting to cook. So mix it up and do 30 more seconds. So I only did, I guess, a minute and 10 seconds total. And this is what it comes out looking like. They're like super fluffy, but you just cannot overcook them. You have to watch it really closely. I don't know, eggs are kind of gross in general if you think about it, but they're like super fluffy scrambled eggs. It's a nice texture, but if you overcook it, then it starts getting rubbery. So you have to just really watch it. Raven's Ratchet Kitchen, Raven's Rustic Survival Kitchen, not too shabby. And I got my little mocha latte espresso hot chocolate too. All right, y'all. So it is a little bit later. It is 11, 18, and I was just here because the electricity literally just went off a second ago. It's been on the past couple hours. So I was here just kind of enjoying the electricity, able to use my heating pad to warm up a little bit and able to like make food as you saw. So I was just here kind of like enjoying that before I was planning to walk over to my mom's house and also, you know, just kind of waiting for it to warm up a little bit outside too. I wasn't like ready to leave just yet. I was about to get up and get ready. And then my mom calls me and she's like, one of the neighbors is driving down. She says she could give you a ride. She's, but she's outside your house right now. And I'm like, I'm not ready. I haven't set up Bougie's food. I haven't gotten my stuff together. I'm not ready to go. If they're already like leaving now, I'm not ready. And I'm still not too confident about driving anywhere any Anyway, and she's like, well, just let me know. I think I'll be fine to walk. I'm kind of excited to walk because I'm really bored and I have been in the house for s several, several days in a row. So I'm kind of like excited to go on a little adventure and walk and get some fresh air, honestly. So I'm not too mad about having to, to walk. I'm setting up Bougie's automatic feeder. If you don't get out the way, he gets in front of the camera every single time. This little, automatic feeder which runs on batteries thankfully and I had the batteries for it. So I'm setting this up because I'm probably gonna be gone from my house for at least another two days. You hear that dripping noise? That's my faucet's dripping. Bougie, this is not for you for right now. Stop eating it. I was able, I had my phone on the charger the whole time so I have full battery now which is good. Bougie, I can't close the door because I need the light to shine in because lights, oh the struggle, the pain, the horror. Bougie, please, why are you so greedy? Get out the way. If you eat all this right now, you're gonna be hungry for the next two days. Stop it. Press the clock, then press set until hours flash. Which one is set? Press the clock. <sighs> okay, well let me finish setting up his feeder. Then I gotta get myself and the rest of my stuff together. My dad just texted me and said, bring snacks for Zaya if you have some. Okay. All right, Bougie's feeder is all set up. Now in terms of what I'm bringing, I gotta pack light because it's only gonna be what I can carry and I'm gonna be walking for about an hour. So I don't wanna make it too hard on myself. Um, I had packed up all this stuff yesterday when I thought that I was gonna be going in a car. So I'm going to reconsider 
what I really need to bring for two days. TMI, I don't know if I said this earlier, but I am also on my period, which is really nice. So these are my feminine products. Gotta bring that. Underwear and stuff, gotta bring that. Uh, I'm going to bring pajamas for me, pajamas for Zaya, cause she doesn't have that. I'm gonna bring Zaya's long underwear so she can at least have that under her clothes. Thicker socks for her. I'm sure she'll appreciate having some extra stuff to put on. One little change of clothes for her and that's it. So this, this, and this. These are thermal leggings that have fleece on the inside. I'm already wearing one pair underneath my sweats right now. I'm gonna bring a change to change into. Yeah, I think I'm gonna put this on as a, like a fifth layer. Okay, so that took a bunch of stuff out of my bag that I don't think I need. I'm gonna be wearing most of my stuff, but I have like my gloves, my hat, my mask, my neck warmer thing, and then just the essentials, phone, keys, wallet, bring an extra flashlight. They said they don't need me to bring water because their neighbor just dropped off a case of water. I was gonna try and bring a few bottles of water, but maybe I'll just bring like one or two. I do still have some snacks that I can bring. I'll make sure Bougie is set to go, and then we will be on our way on this adventure. I also packed up my heating pad because that's been saving me when we do have electricity. All right, as far as my outfit goes, I've got on thermal leggings, thermal shirt, my thickest champion, like super thick sweatpants, this fleece hoodie. Okay, so that's another layer. Then I'm gonna put this on, because this is actually really warm. It's like super thick and fluffy on both sides, so I've been wearing this the whole time. This is like my thickest sweater thingy that can still fit under my North Face jacket, which is gonna be my final look. Well, actually, I think I'm gonna bring my blanket too. No shame. And then my North Face will go on top. My actual winter coat. It's getting a little tight. Sleeves are getting a little tight. <laughs> Okay, it's a little tight, it's a little tight. Cause the North Face is like a slim fit and it's like getting tight in the armpits with all these layers. I have a little neck warmer thingy. I think that's what this is. This thing, my face mask, which actually really comes in handy, just not even for COVID reasons, but to keep my face warm. And then my hat, and then I got my gloves, but the gloves that I have are both kind of cheapy. So I have like a thinner, cozier pair and then a thicker waterproof pair. So I've been doubling them up. So I'm gonna put on two pairs of gloves. So then I'll be out there like this. <laughs> with my bag, uh, which is actually kind of heavy. And then I'm gonna put my big boots on and we're gonna be ready to go. All right, y'all, I'm heading out. All my layers, my blanket, glasses, mask, everything. I'm bringing my headphones so I can listen to music on the way. I'm suited and booted. The last time that I was able to look at the thermostat before the electricity went out, it was about 53 degrees inside my house. I think it's about 20 degrees outside right now. It doesn't look windy. It looks pretty sunny. We are about to start this 45 minute walk over to my mom's house. All right, I'm out here. I'm actually kind of hot. I have so many layers on. The only thing that's cold is my toes because I don't have like the best situation in terms of footwear, but my core is hot. And there's actually a couple other people out here walking too. They're probably doing a similar thing that I'm doing, but I literally feel like I'm in Alaska, Colorado. I'm walking in the street because since cars have been going down here, it's more knocked down, like the snow is knocked down. So it's easier to walk in the middle of the street versus the sidewalk has like thick snow on it. And it's like hard to walk on the sidewalk. So I'm literally walking smack dab in the middle of the street. And this is usually the busiest street in my neighborhood, but it is completely empty right now. My dad said he was gonna meet me halfway and he already got a head start, like I said. So he's already at the halfway point waiting for me, um, but he was able to go inside somewhere and wait. So he's not waiting in the cold. Making the last few steps up to my mom's house. Oh my God, are you really? <laughs> we made it. Only thing is I just realized I had my blanket wrapped around my shoulders and I dropped it at some point and I didn't what? realize. <laughs> I can't feel it, I have so many layers on. Daya! Oh my goodness. Reunited. I haven't seen you in days. What are y'all, what's going on in this household? 
Eat what well we can. Popcorn. Breakfast. I mean, popcorn on the plate. <laughs> Have you been having a good time? Mm -hmm. I guess what? What? There's no water. There's no water. I know. Oh my goodness. I made it and. Lucky for me, their power just came on a second ago, right before I got here too. So there's electricity here, there's heat here. It feels so hot in here. I had to take everything off because I have not felt what 70 degrees feels like in days. They have heat, so it's warm in here. Got power, got food. I see chicken, popcorn, waffles. Y'all just living large. Diane has had a, a, a special menu she's wanted every day. First day, pancakes, with cranberries and blueberries. Cranberries? I, I don't have cranberries, I have raspberries and bacon. Second day, stovetop toast because <laughs> the electricity was out. Bacon. How do y'all light your thing with don't you need electricity to start it? Or you just use yeah, a lighter? I've never lived in a in a ratchet house where you have every time you got to light with one of these. Uh oh. And the walk really wasn't bad. I feel like if it was a nice spring day, that would be actually a nice little walk to take. What you been doing? Oh, you, you got a phone? That's how you been entertaining yourself? Has it been fun at Grammy's house during the snowstorm? Or you been bored? I liked it. But every time when we, when we were having fun, the power went off 10 times. The power kept going off 10 times? Yeah, it keeps going off and on. It's on right now, but it's probably going to go off again. So you just got to use it when you have it. At least y'all get to stay warm here because y'all have, have had heat the whole time. It's cold at our house. I had to leave Bougie there in the cold. Why? Because I couldn't bring him with me because I had to walk over here. Yeah, but you shouldn't have to put Bougie in the carry-on and then walk over here. Yeah, but he was too heavy to carry him and also he would have been too cold. But he's in the laundry room and I left him some food and his little blanket in there. Electricity is back out over here. So my mom made a um, explorer light out of a flashlight and a headband so she can see what she's doing cooking. Really? <laughs> You're gonna wanna remember these memories. I doubt it. Chef Tony still Chef Tonying, even in the ice apocalypse. <laughs> Dinner is ready, power is still out, so we are having to use phone flashlights to see. But look at this gourmet. We're in here surviving, but the food looks gourmet. Pasta. You ready to eat? Each person gets a candle to light their meal. I wanted to show y'all um, how I'm washing my face this morning. It is Wednesday morning, I think day i don't know of this weather i'm still at my parents house we have electricity right now we still don't have running water so i'm using bottled water luckily we have that and stealing my sister's face wash to wash my face and the bottled water even though it's been sitting out at room temperature it's freezing cold because it's cold it feels like i just got it out of the refrigerator but i didn't a nice refreshing cold skincare routine Clearly my skin is doing, like what the heck is that? Skin is doing horrible right now and I'm sure this isn't helping, but whatever. And also we have to be careful because now they're saying that like the sewage system might freeze up or have a problem with that. So just the fact that we're like using bottled water and letting it go down the drain might be a problem. So we might be forced to like just not use water at all or something or just like I guess collect it in a bucket and not let it go down the drain. I'm starting to see a lot of videos of people's pipes bursting and flooding their apartments and their houses and stuff. And I left my house, I left the faucets open like they said to do. When I left my house, my water had just stopped I don't know if it's because of the water supply or because of the pipes freezing. And obviously nobody's there right now to be able to keep an eye on it. Who knows what's going on at my house right now? I've contacted my neighbors so they can kind of keep an eye on it for me, but fingers crossed that my house is okay during all of this while I'm not there. And yes, I'm still wearing the same sweater. I changed my other clothes, but this is still the go-to sweater. I've been wearing this sweater for a week straight. Zaya, are you thriving? What? 
How are you doing? Good. Good? Well, I was trying to tell you what color for the dress. Oh, Zaya's and keeping she, herself busy. Even though we do have electricity right now and she could be watching TV, she's keeping herself busy with coloring pages. I didn't even dry my face. Hold on. This is what she's been doing to keep herself busy. Hair is a mess, obviously. Give us a break. We don't have running water. When's the last time you took a bath? Did you take a bath yesterday? There's just so many things. Oh, no, why? Saturday I took a bath. On Saturday you took a bath? You know what day it is today? I think today is Wednesday. So that's been Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Four days with no bath? <laughs> Are you stinky? Yeah. So it's about 5 p.m. on Wednesday. Still at my parents' house. Still wearing the sweater. <laughs> um, wanted to show what the weather currently has been looking like. Basically, it was ice and then it was snow and then it's now ice on top of the snow. So the snow is like real crunchy like that. It looks like snow, but it's really ice. Furniture is all frozen. And also some damage I wanted to show y'all is the way that my parents big old tree in the backyard broke like a bunch of branches like this big branch fell off and there's another one that fell off over there just because of the weight of the ice and the snow on the branches like made it heavy and then with the wind and stuff it just broke off and a lot of people were having that problem with trees falling down you can see a big branch that fell way over there still haven't been out of the house at all for obvious reasons so Have you ever taken a bath like that before? No. But that worked good enough. We got you clean enough. We just can't do your hair. It was hair washing time about four or five days ago. And we do not have the proper water supply to wash this hair. So that's going to be real fun to deal with later. But at least you're clean and fresh now. You feel better? Okay, let's put these clothes on. These are our last pair of panties. New sweater, feeling a little bit fresh. Keyword, a little bit. I used one jug of water to take a little rinse off shower. It was just enough to wash my body up and rinse it off. It wasn't enough to do the hair. Um, so that's just gonna have to wait. So we're still looking pretty crusty, but at least we are refreshed. Zaya is refreshed. We're still having to be very careful with the water usage because we have a few buckets of water that we're using right now. We also have bottled water, but obviously we're trying to save the bottled water for drinking and cooking and whatnot, because even if we were able to get water out of our faucets or if we are borrowing water from the neighbor's faucets, we are under a boil water notice. So at first it was just an issue of the pipes are frozen, we're not able to get any water out. Now it's even if we were able to get water out, we're under a boil water notice because the water treatment plant didn't have power so they weren't able to treat the water so the water coming out of people's faucets is dirty and full of bacteria and parasites so you can't use it unless you boil it first and it's just this whole hoopla so a lot of people are without water or at least without clean water right now we had electricity like all day yesterday and so far all day today we've had electricity so i think the electricity problem is fixed knock on wood now it's just the problem of the water but like i said we're making do just using what we have and being careful not to use it all up yeah so that's the update we are expecting another freeze tonight so we're expecting at least a whole nother day of this nonsense and so that'll be friday and then on saturday that's when we can kind of expect things to start going back to normal kind of because that's when the weather starts warming up yeah but for now still at my mom's house we're chilling i guess checking in it is friday i have a new pimple on my head the current temperature is 18 degrees 
And we are still in the same overall situation as yesterday. We have electricity, we have heat and everything. Didn't have gas and stuff over here, but we still just don't have water. I want to try and go back to my house at some point today to check on Bougie, because he's been there for the past two and a half days by himself. But if we are able to make it back to my house today, I'm going to go and check on him. We just started it's running and screaming. Water. The water is dripping. I heard it. I heard the sound. We have to carefully let it open because if we just bust open the faucets, it might explode or something. We don't know, but I just heard it. I was like, what is that foreign sound that I haven't heard in a week? Oh my God. We've been living like this for a week. Okay, my dad is turning on the, like opening the water main because we had it shut off. So he's opening it up so we can see if it comes out normal. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Who knew the sound of running water could be so sweet? So far, so good. My dad turned the, the main on. This looks pretty normal. Just a little bit like low pressure, but that's also because the city is having issues with the water line anyway. It's kind of like multiple problems going on, but at least we have some water coming out because that is much better than, oh, I forgot to look at this one. Okay, yeah. Low pressure, dirty water is better than no water because at least we have water coming out that we can still boil and still use instead of having to go get buckets from the neighbors like we've been doing. Yay, water! It sounds like the snow is melting now and the whole water is going to pop us out. Well, the snow is good that the snow is melting. I know the, the snow can be kind of fun and different, but it, it really wasn't that fun anymore. We wanted the snow to melt because it was causing a lot of problems. So it's actually a happy thing that the snow is melting this time. And we still are gonna stay here for probably another day because our house is still cold. You've been having fun staying here? It's a good thing that the water is back on and the snow is melting. And it's gonna be a good thing for us to go back home. I think we should turn the water off so, so we don't waste it. So we don't waste it. Well, I was just testing it out. So yes, it is Friday, 3.30 p.m. on Friday. All of this bad weather and everything started happening last Thursday, I think. So it's been a full week and we just now have all utilities back at my mom's house. Everything is melting outside. The roads are looking clear. The snow and the ice is melting. The weather is clearing up. The sun is out. We see the light at the end of the tunnel. Things are going back to normal. At least over here at my mom's house, we are all good. Now at my house, on the other hand, uh, I still don't have gas. And I'm still not sure about my water situation at my house. We will have to go back. I think we're just gonna wait till tomorrow when everything is like fully thawed out. No! Oh my gosh. What happened? There's a tight brush over here. No! Literally, okay. no, 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 no. It's actually, I. oh my God, I was just, no. Would you like to give your account of the events? The eyewitness, um, what you call it? Recount of what just happened. Water. Because I threw my phone down right when I heard you scream. I heard water gushing like it was a bathtub turned on or something against the fireplace. I called Alan, behind the fireplace, like behind the fireplace, and I ran out to call Alan because he was still outside to ask him, did he hear this? And when I ran back in, my feet touched ice cold water, and that's when I started screaming. And so I ran out like, what, what? Because I couldn't understand what she was saying at first, and then I saw the water in the living room that was already making it halfway across the living room, but it didn't bust through. Like when you, I've been seeing people's videos, like the pipe like busts through the wall and breaks through the drywall and stuff. It didn't do like that. The water was just coming through the crack, like where the wall meets the floor. It was like rushing through the crack and you could hear it like full blast behind the fireplace. Obviously some pipe burst right behind that tile. Ran out there immediately, turned the water main off, which stopped the water from flowing. Luckily there was actually blankets on the floor because we were laying on the floor earlier, which I think that actually helped a lot from getting all over y'all's rug mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, and then we just got all the towels and blankets and wiped it up. So I feel like we got it under control pretty quickly to avoid interior damage. 
It started trying to get on the TV wires and stuff, but we got it before it ruined anything inside. We just still don't know what's going on within the walls. But I was able to call five or six plumbers. Two of them put me on a week to seven day wait list. One of them said they might be able to come out tomorrow, but I'm not really sure whether it was like a real certified plumbing company or just person and then I finally uh, called a, a plumber and they said we installed the plumbing in that house so we'll give you priority so they're actually gonna come they think they can come tomorrow they're gonna be working through the weekend yeah of <sighs> course because everybody's dealing not everybody but a lot of people are dealing with busted pipes and stuff the plumbers are all booked up but luckily like she said um it looks like somebody's gonna come out tomorrow fingers crossed that they don't have to um bust down the whole fireplace to get to the issue though because that's the fear right now but yeah in the meantime right now there's nothing else we could do we still so that means we don't have water again i'm so happy we did get a couple good we were we were started. screaming and running and laughing like finally we got water because that was just the last thing we needed here we already they had gas had electricity had everything we just needed the water we got the water and then boom pipe burst so that's annoying but whatever and also now we have to be careful about my house because we don't want the same thing to happen at my house the water is turned off at my house so we're just gonna leave it turned off, off here too, until it was on. well that's what i'm saying so we're just gonna leave it turned off at my house until we have a better idea of how to properly i don't know do it because we thought we knew what we were doing over here by turning it on and then that happened so i don't want that to happen at my house that's the current update All right, y'all, so it is 9.23 on Saturday. As you can see, we are back at my house. What I mean by we is me, Bougie, and Zaya. What went down this morning? My mom took her car to the grocery store because now the roads are drivable, people are getting out, people are able to go places, get what they need. She needed to get groceries and more bottled water and stuff like that because still don't have water at their house. So she left to go to the grocery store. My dad stayed at their house because the plumber is coming and he needs to be there for that. Then I took Maya's car and came over here and brought Zaya with me. Really didn't necessarily need to bring Zaya, but she wanted to come. <laughs> so me, Zaya, and Bougie are back at my house because we need, somebody needs to be here for the gas company who is making their rounds. I thought I just saw the truck, but then they turned around and went the other way. So I'm hoping that they're coming. I see the neighbors outside with the truck. I might need to go out there and let them know that I need help too. But um, the gas company is going around because my whole section of the neighborhood hasn't had gas since Sunday night. It has now been almost a full because today's Saturday, almost a full week that there's been no gas, which I know I sound like a broken record, but that means no stove, no heater, most importantly, no fireplace, no grill, no nothing. Like people were on Twitter telling me like, oh, if your electricity is out, you can still light your stove with a lighter. No, I don't have gas. I don't have the substance that starts the flame, period. Water heater, house heater, like AC heater, um, stove, fireplace, all that stuff. So it is still freezing cold in here. I'm pacing around because I'm just like, uh, don't know what to do with myself. It is 54 degrees in here. The lowest that I've seen it get down to was like 53. It feels even colder than that, honestly. Like my hands, I feel like I'm gonna put gloves on. You cannot walk around in here without no socks or shoes. Like the floor is ice cold, the air is cold. Like it almost feels colder in here than it does outside because outside, you know, everything is melting, the sun is shining, the sun is out and it doesn't feel too bad outside. I don't know what the current temperature is outside. Let me see. Yeah, outside right now is 37. So it's finally above freezing. It's about to go up to like 54 today, which is great and it's gonna be sunny all day so it feels pretty good outside <laughs> comparatively and here where there ain't no sun shining and ain't no source of heat at all it is like you feel like you're inside of a refrigerator maybe even a freezer but i also still don't have water running water just because we turned the water main off or we had my my neighbor came and turned it off for me while i was gone because i was like let's just turn it off to be safe so it's still off and I could probably turn it back on and see if the water would be flowing again. But that's exactly what we did at my mom's house yesterday and a pipe burst. So I'm waiting to kind of hear from the experts because online, everybody is saying totally different stuff. Everybody is giving completely conflicting instructions and advice depending on what website you look at, depending on who you look at. It's like, turn it on, keep it off, do this, do that, like opposite stuff. So I'm really nervous about turning my water back on. So I'm waiting for the plumber that's going to my mom's house. We're gonna 
my dad is going to ask him, what should we have done to prevent this? That way we can do that over here. And Bougie is doing just fine. <laughs> he is acting like his normal self for anybody who is concerned. All right, so we're all bundled up, keeping warm in here. Are you cold? No? You don't get cold easily. You're a lot more hot natured than I am. I get cold easily. I just made hot chocolate. We don't have water, but we do have milk. So I was able to heat up milk in the microwave and make hot chocolate. I found a little bit. I thought I had ran out, but I found some more. To the person who made us these custom cups, I think like two years ago now, you don't know how much we use these things. These have come in so much handy. Zaya takes it to school every day. It has held up so well. Thank you. I've got mine in here. I mix mine with espresso, which I think that's gonna be my new thing, uh, putting this instant espresso powder in hot chocolate. It's a really good combination. Since I don't have water to make coffee, this is a good substitute. I need to venture outside because I noticed before I had left to escape over to my parents' house, I don't know if I said it to the camera, but I was hearing some noises, like cracking noises. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know if that's my pipes or what. And I was worried about my outdoor sink because this was very uninsulated, very, like if anything was gonna freeze and explode and break due to the weather, it was gonna be this water situation because it's just out here, exposed to the elements, no type of insulation, just plastic PVC piping underneath, which is the worst kind. Ice is still falling and melting because I mean, it was built to be an outdoor kitchen in Texas where it's mostly hot. So it wasn't really built to be in extreme winter weather, but it also was poorly built in the first place. So I'm like, it's all this stuff that's falling down because everything kept melting and remelting and I mean melting and then refreezing. So it was dripping down and then refreezing. So it was creating these huge icicles everywhere and now they're starting to fall off. Uh, well, that's one way to do it. Everything's starting to melt here, everything dripping. My yard is still covered, but that's the least of my concern right now. Long story short, my dad came over here before the weather got bad as we were prepping for everything as much as we could. He got this insulation stuff and taped it around the pipes. That was all he knew to do and all he felt like he could do to kind of like prep. And so it has been wrapped up like this. Long story short, I see water coming from the pipe. So I'm gonna cut off the insulation and see what's going on. Now it may just be residual water from the weather and not coming from the pipe. But you see that? I'm just trying to make sure this plastic piping is not cracked in any way. Because if I turn the main water on, it's gonna go rushing through here and spraying everywhere. So far, it might just be from like this seal right here. I'm no plumber, I don't know. Okay, from what I can see, there's no obvious break or crack. So I think that's good. The obvious thing though is this little thing on the sink. This is supposed to be like up in there and it like got pushed out and it's like lodged in a weird position. I can't push it back in, so that's damaged. But this is able to move freely now. It was definitely frozen at one point. I couldn't even move it. Palmer says that's all you can do is, you know, open the faucets and slowly turn the water pressure on and go check each area for leaks or if it looks like, you know, water's like if you turn and you start upstairs that just read another post one person can go upstairs one person daddy can check the outside you can check the downstairs i'm calling daddy no, 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 no. My dad is outside cracking the main water line open just a little bit to let a little bit of water come through. It should be able to come through. If it was previously frozen, it should be thawed by now because everything is like thawing out and melting. We've got all the faucets cracked open. He's gonna crack the main open and water should slowly start flowing through. And we're just watching to make sure nothing happens with the pipes. Nothing seems weird with the faucets and stuff. Yeah, getting anything? Not yet. Okay, I'm trying to make sure I'm turning the right one. I'm assuming it's the one that's closest to your house. Okay, kitchen is is on. It's starting to flow through. 
My bathroom's still not a drip though. Uh, little drip outside. So update, we got my water main cracked open a little bit. We've got a tiny drip of water coming out of some of my faucets. Like the kitchen faucet is barely dripping and like the powder room, but a lot of the faucets still no drip. Um, the water pressure just seems to be really low for the whole neighborhood. There's a possibility that some of my pipes might still be a little bit frozen, so it's not quite able to come out. So we're just doing it very, very slowly, just like slowly letting the water drip out and also fill up my water tank up in the attic and stuff. The gas people are about to come to my house to turn the gas back on. So we should have heat here in a minute, hopefully. Bougie! And my dad went around to all the surrounding houses and helped everybody, you know, turn their water back on and do what I'm doing because everybody's confused. Nobody knows how the water system works. Nobody knows how to turn it off, turn it on, nothing. So far, so good. No leaks or anything at my house, uh, but we're just kind of slowly doing it and waiting it out. So, ooh, smell gassy out here. It's back on. We have gas, we have fire. The grill, the stove, the heater, the fireplace, everything run on gas. Let there be light, yay. Heat, it should start heating up here. Fireplace, woohoo. Leave this on, start warming up the house cause it's gonna take a while for the heater to get all the way up. We're kind of letting the house warm up before we open the water up anymore because that'll kind of help if there is anything that still needs to thaw or is still frozen, that can kind of thaw out before we just crank it open. So bougie, stop. Yeah, so that's the current update. Like I said, hopefully like by, you know, end of today, tomorrow, the water will be back to normal as well with no problems, knock on wood. And also my parent, I don't know if I said this, but my parents got their broken pipe fixed this morning. So it turned out to be a pretty easy fix. So now they have everything back to normal. And so now it's just me, Zaya and Bougie over here, my parents and Maya and everybody left to go back home and try to like get back to, you know, their normal stuff that they need to do. Um, I am going to do the same thing. My house is a mess. So I'm gonna try and like clean up a little bit, try to get back to work a little bit in terms of like content and emails and whatnot. And yeah, I guess I'll check back in with final thoughts later, whether it be later tonight or tomorrow. Oh wait, actually I forgot there is one more issue at my house with the electricity going off and on so much it like messed up certain like on the breaker box how like you have like different electrical switches like three out of the 20 switches are like not turning back on at all and it controls like some of the outlets like it controls the garbage disposal it controls the plug that i had my alexa plugged into and it controls like the dining room plugs and i think my washer and dryer let me go Check, the dishwasher is still working. No, the washer still turns on. Dryer still turns on. All this stuff in here still works. Anyway, some of the outlets are not working and I showed my dad, he wasn't able to figure out why that happened. <sighs> That is gonna be one more thing that I am gonna to have to call an electrician to come out and look at that at some point as well. But they're not like majorly important outlets. Like the main, like my appliances, fridge, microwave, oven, stove, and all the main stuff works. It's just like some random plugs like over here for the most part. And the garbage disposal is like the only thing, which is not like that big of a deal. So that's good because it would be bad if it was like the fridge or something like that. So we were home all afternoon, but then I started to get stir crazy and also started to get hungry. I mean, got too much groceries left. So we just went to Sonic. Roads are completely dry and drivable. It's crazy how fast everything melted and kind of like somewhat went back to normal today. So the roads are completely clear and safe. So we were able to just took Zaya to Sonic to get some food. Sonic was struggling a bit. You could tell they're a little bit overwhelmed today, not having their normal ingredients in stock because I'm sure they weren't able to get their deliveries until today. Just got back from doing that. And my yard, it's like, four o'clock now and I showed y'all what it was looking like earlier today. It was still completely covered and now it's looking like this. So everything is quickly melting. All the ice and everything has melted off of my patio. Still got the water trickling. Don't have full power with that yet. Everything is melting. Crazy how fast the weather changes. And when we went to go to Sonic, people were literally out walking their dogs wearing shorts. Honestly, it's like, it's warm out here. <laughs> everything was all dry and melting 
melted. Like it's not even wet. It like melted and dried up so fast. Just as if nothing ever happened. Like what the heck? And it's literally gonna get up to like 70 degrees in the next couple days. So I don't know, global warming. So it is Sunday. We officially have water and everything back on and back to normal. So now I can do all these dishes, run the dishwasher, all that stuff. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The weather outside is sunny and normal and everything is completely melted. No sign of ice or snow or anything at all anymore. So we are back to normal. The house is a mess. I need to clean now that I have water. But in the meantime, Zaya's little Valentines have been sitting here this whole time because obviously school kept getting canceled and the Valentine's party kept getting rescheduled, but they are going to have it tomorrow. With all the delays and everything, that gave me some extra time to think about how I wanted to finish off the little goodie bags. So I decided to get help from my mom to cut out these little tags with the Cricut. Of course, always gotta add a little Cricut customization to everything. So I'm sitting here cutting those out and gonna add them to each little bag like this. And then Zaya will be able to take these to school tomorrow and have her big Valentine's Day party, which will be a great way to, you know, start back up the week again after all this. All right guys, so it is probably almost midnight right now, still on Sunday. I took the most extreme shower just now, scrubbed my body down like I ain't never scrubbed before. First I finished Zaya's Valentine's and stuff and tried to like just get, get myself together, get the house together, get her stuff together for school. Then I washed her hair, which was a chore and a half. Her hair was like, dread it up, put her to bed and everything. And then I was able to take some time for myself to fully, fully just like do some self care and do some personal hygiene, skincare, all that stuff that I have um, not been able to do for the past seven days. As of now, everything is back to normal. The only thing that's not back to normal is that we are on a boil water notice. So that's not really a big deal and that should probably be over maybe by tomorrow, but we have running water, we have hot water, electricity, gas, all the things, everything is back to normal. I'm getting groceries delivered tomorrow. Zaya is going to school tomorrow. They're gonna be having their Valentine's Day party tomorrow. I am going to be having a lunch meeting and getting back to work and just getting caught up with content and everything that I missed over the past week. We will start fresh tomorrow with everything back to normal. What have I learned? through all of this. I have learned, number one, not to take things for granted, not to take running water, electricity, all that stuff for granted, which I mean, I guess I already knew that anyway, but this just really throws it in your face. Like, hey, you never know what you got till it's gone. So I'm very thankful and grateful for everything that I have and I will never take it for granted. But also I learned that I need to be more prepared in terms of like emergency apocalyptic preparedness, you know, just having things like a space heater and and having an emergency kit and having things in case you don't have running water, having things in case you don't have electricity, all those things that you need. I mean, I had some stuff like basic stuff like flashlights and I had one heating pad and whatever, but there's definitely a lot more like supplies that I feel like I need to have on hand in case anything like this ever happens again. And with freaking global warming, they're saying that this is not gonna be the last time that this happens. So I am definitely going to be preparing, you know, a whole emergency kit and a whole emergency stockpile to have and just be more aware and be more alert and just be more prepared for next time because I just really felt just helpless for most of this whole situation. No damage was done to my house really for the most part. Um, very little damage ended up being done to my parents' house and he got that fixed and we're all safe and healthy and nothing you know, too horrible happened. So I'm very, very lucky and thankful for that. Thank you to all of you guys who were reaching out to me on like Twitter and Instagram and everything during the whole situation. A lot of you guys were checking on me. I really appreciate that. I guess that's it. We're gonna start fresh tomorrow with a beautiful sunny day as if nothing ever happened. <laughs>